Hi everyone and welcome back to our Collectibles mini-series in UE4. Uh, last time we just set up the gem collectible, um, so they are randomised colours and that they rotate in the world and you can pick them up while we're just running over them. So the first thing we're going to do today is we're going to make it so they attract towards you. So they, when you run over them they fly towards the player so you, they look like they're being attracted to you. Um, and then we're going to start working towards getting it to display on the screen uh, that change of value. So let's get cracking with this. Uh, so first of all let's work on getting it to attract towards the player. So if you go onto your gem collectible and look at where we've done our overlap. We're going to get rid of destroy actor for now. And instead, we're going to use a timeline. So go add timeline, and we'll call it uh, attraction, and we'll open it up. On the attraction timeline, we're going to add a float track. So click the F button, and you want to name it um, distance. And uh, I usually identify that's a normalized value, so I remind myself what I'm doing here. So by normalized. It's going to go between 0 and 1. So I'm going to shift left click on the graph to add a point and then again to add a second point. The first point is going to have a time of 0 and a value of 0 and the second point is going to have a time of 0 0.5 and a value of 1. So in half a second it will go from 0 to 1. I'm going to change the length at the top here to match it so I go 0 0.5 here as well. And if you want to see what the graph looks like, you can scale it by using these zoom buttons to zoom it to fit. But that's all we need to do for here. Um, we click compile and we can close it. So this attraction timeline will trigger and start doing its thing. And we're going to use the distance here to lerp between its current location and the player's location. So let's do a lerp. So right click and do a, a vector lerp. And the distance normalized is going to become the alpha. So the lerp is going to go between value A towards value B. Value A is when the value is 0 and B is when the value is 1 and it will go between the two gradually. So A is its current location. So I'm going to drag the gem out because that's the bit that's going to be moving and we're going to set world location or it's not, not set, sorry, get world location and plug that into A. I'm then going to go back to my cast and grab my as third person character and do get uh, actor location and plug that into B. So as that 0.5 seconds goes past, it will go from this location to this location. So to actually do the movement now, we're going to drag the gem out again and we're going to set world location of the gem and it's going to go into update on the timeline and the location is going to come from that lerp and then when it's done so when it's finished here we're going to come out of there and do destroy actor hit compile and test this out so now if I run over the gems they fly towards my belly and get absorbed into the player and this works really well because you can just adjust the size of those spheres to be whatever you want. So if I increase the sphere radius here considerably and then go into these spheres, I can, don't have to be right close anymore. They will just sort of attract them from afar. And you can probably put some gameplay stuff in there so you can customize the size of these spheres. Um, by look, They can do a look up and then see what the player's sphere radius could be and use that to set their own one, whatever it may be like that. Um, totally up to you, but that's one cool way of doing that. So now we've got it being attracted to the player and being destroyed, we're going to have to actually change a value on the player character. So on the player character, let's open up their code, and let's make a new variable. So in the bottom left, new variable, and here we're going to go and call gems. And I'm going to change the variable type to this to a integer, because you can't have half a gem, you can only get full whole number values, so integer is where we want. And we can click compile. So we're going to start off with zero gems. And then we're going to, on gem collectible, actually not gem collectible, on third person character, we're going to add a function. Um, function, no, we do event, sorry. We do have an event. So do custom event, 
and we'll say collected gem. And when we collect the gem, we're going to increase the gem count here. So get gems and then increment int. And that just adds one to it and sets it back to gems. So it saves a lot of the legwork. You can just do this. For now, that'll do. But if you want to play a sound effect, this is where you'd put it. Um, if you're doing a particle effect, you can do that here as well, whatever you want. So I'm going to hit compile and that's now done there. So to test this out, I'm going to print string actually on the end of this and just chuck in that integer there so we know how many gems we've got. And then back on my gem collectible on the event graph, it's got destroy actor already set in. I can, if I wanted to, add it onto the end of here. Um, what I'm going to do actually is we're going to just disconnect that from there. And on finished, we're going to drag out from here. So not drag out from there. Drag out from the cast here because we've done the cast already. So drag out from there and then do the collected gem function and put it onto finished and then put destroy actor onto the collected gem. You may want to space this out like so. And hit compile. So now that will collect the gem and this will destroy the current gem. So to test this out, when I run over it, you should see the value change in the corner. Excellent. So I've got six. Um, and there's six gems there. So the next part is to get working with the UI. And I think what we'll do is we'll pause for now and we'll do it in the next episode. So if you want to watch that next episode right now, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey. And just a donation of just one dollar will get access to that video plus many other videos as well. Big thank you to all my patrons for the continued support. Um, it's been amazing to see the support coming from you guys. So thank you so much. If you like what I do and yet to have subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you have any comments, questions or suggestions for future content, please leave a comment below. I'll uh, be fascinated to see what you guys want to see. So thanks again, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.